right? Clearly, we have the formula of the limit of calculating the limit of uh, composite function, right? First, looking at the uh, limit of the inside function, then possibly can replace the inside function with that limit and calculate the outside limit, right? But first, let me draw the graph, right? just to make it more visual, uh, visualizing it. So, x, y. So when x is non-zero, defined to be y, right? just a constant, a vertical uh, horizontal line. So when x is, so here is a whole point, right? x is non-zero. So when x is zero, defined as zero, here is a solid point. So clearly, when the, this function, when x is approaching zero, I can see that f of x is clearly attending to what? One, like I said, deleted neighborhood, right? Has nothing to do with zero, even though the functional value of zero is defined to be zero, right? But the overall tendency is still tending toward one, right? But that's clear. So which means, so which means combined with this result, right? What's the limit? What's the limit as t approaches zero of g of t? Right? So previously I've made a video discussing the limit of Riemann raindrop function, uh, which is uh, very similar to this one. Right? Almost the same, essentially the same as this one. I've shown uh, in a previous video that the limit of this function is zero at every point, no matter if it's irrational, rational, whatever, always zero. I'll perhaps uh, attach that link uh, of that video. So that is equal to zero. All right. So according to the composite function, perhaps we should let, okay, t is approaching zero, g approaching zero, fine. Right. So essentially, we, are, we regard g as x, right? f of g, f of x, right? We treat g as x, right? So which means as t is approaching zero, x is also approaching zero, right? But according to this result, when x is approaching zero, f is approaching one. So does that mean, does that mean overall as t is approaching zero, does that mean this limit is actually one, right? According to the composite function, you know, t approaching zero, g approaching also zero, so g is just like x, g is essentially x, right? It's inside f, right? x is approaching zero, that's approaching one, yeah. Is it equal to, pause the video for a second, think about it. The short answer is no, the limit is not zero at all. Uh, the limit is not one at all. Here's why. So first of all, let me actually com composite function and see what really happens, right? So what is really f of g of t? Obviously a piecewise function, I can see that. Because when t is equal to p over q, g is equal to 1 over q, but I, like I said, g can be treated as x, right, because I'm composing it. So when x is equal to 1 over q, that means when x is non-zero, right, defined to be 1. So uh, all in all, when t is equal to p over q, our composite function should be equal to 1, right? 1, when t is equal to p over q, where, where p and q are co-prime, p, q does not equal to zero, right? The same condition. So when t is irrational, g is equal to zero. In other words, x is equal to zero. But when x is equal to zero, f is equal to zero also. So all in all, when t is irrational, f a composite function is zero. Right? So 
So that's what's really happening. Now, when t is approaching zero, what's what's the limit of f? Now, can we actually draw the graph? Maybe. But the graph is actually undrawable. Why? Because every time t is rational, right, uh, perhaps we're dismissing zero. Right? That, that doesn't matter. As long as t is rational, defined to be one, right? One, 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 one. But rational numbers are dense when t is irrational, but irrational numbers are also dense. So we have many, many dense zeros, right? So meaning the function is always jumping around, jumping around. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 keeps oscillating. So possibly it doesn't have a limit. No limit anywhere. Right? Because in fact, if you choose any point, you choose any point, right? Knowing that both rational and irrational are dense, right? So around this point, in a small enough deleted neighborhood, I can always, always find infinitely many both rationals and irrationals, right? So meaning no matter how small I choose my neighborhood to be, right? There are infinitely many both rationals and irrationals, meaning the function just keeps oscillating between 0 and 1, 0 and 1, 0 and 1, no matter how close I get to x0, right? So it cannot have a limit at anywhere. Right? Contradiction. How can it have a limit of 1? So what's the problem here? Right. So the problem here is that, again, coming back to the very first question, why can we not let x touch x0? It can never touch x0. Right? That's, where, well, that's when the problem will occur. Because right? in this case, in this case, x is actually touching x0. Why? Even though when we let t approach 0, t does not touch 0. That's fine. But guess what? g as x, right? g is actually touching 0. In other words, x is actually touching 0. Why? Because Because as t is approaching 0, like I said, g is also approaching 0, right? But remember, g is defined in this way. As g is approaching 0, guess what? Because of the density of irrational numbers, right? There are infinitely many, many, many irrational numbers, no matter how close you get to 0, right? So meaning, I can, I'm going to inevitably meet infinitely many times zero, no matter how close I get to zero. If, if you treat me as g, right? If, if, I, if I was function g, I'm gonna inevitably touch zero infinitely many, many times, no matter how close I get to zero, right? So, so in that case, g, in other words, x is going to, there is no way that x can avoid can avoid being touching zero, right? X is going to touch zero infinitely many times, no matter how small the neighborhood is, right? It's gonna touch X naught. In here, X naught is zero, right? So X is gonna touch zero infinitely many times when, no matter how close it get to zero, right? And that's, that's why we have such a weird behavior function, right? right? Even though it looks like it has a limit of 1, but that's not true, right? It actually has no limit. Right? So that's a third explanation of why we must require x not touch x not, right? Make sure it's deleted in the neighborhood. So hopefully that explanation clarifies uh, everything a little bit more. Just to clarify things a little bit, 
So even though I said G, right, we, we denote it as X, even though G is going to inevitably meet zero many, 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 infinitely many times, no matter uh, how close G is to zero, right? But I'm not saying that G is always equal to zero nearby zero, because G can also be equal to non-zero infinitely many, 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 many times, because rational numbers are also dense, right? So in other words, nearby zero, right? No matter how nearby we are by zero, we're gonna have to have infinitely many cases where G is, can, can be equal to exactly zero at infinitely many, many points, right? At the same time, it can also be equal to non-zero, also at infinitely many, many points, right? Both are true. But that alone already already causes the problem, right? The, the mere fact that we have uh, many, 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 many times that uh, infinite many, many times g can be equal to exactly zero, right? No matter how close we are to zero. That alone is a problem, right? This function composed with this function, or composite function is also known as Dirichlet. Dirichlet function.